Yeah, Dave, it's good to see you again. <clears throat> I'm curious, uh, now that you start fall camp or fall ball, uh, what are some of the biggest questions you'd like to hopefully get answered over the next couple of months? Well, before I start that, I want to tell you, I really enjoyed your article on our 23 class because we thought nobody knew. We even talked about it that I think the day your article came out, how nobody, we have this incredible class and we haven't heard a word about it, but it was, it is football season and basketball was playing in Europe. And, but uh, that was awesome. A lot of research on that one. I learned some things. Thank you. But uh, what was your question again? No, I'm just kidding. So we got to learn a lot about ourselves this year, this, this fall, uh, mostly in the field. Um, really excited to get it going tomorrow. Um, we've had some really good workouts for the last couple of weeks. The guys actually are a little bit tired with the lifting and fielding, throwing, running. A lot of pitcher bullpens, getting in shape, even better shape. But uh, that's why we gave them a day off today. And then uh, tomorrow we'll work on a few things, and then we'll we'll scrimmage at 3.30. Um, probably go about five or six innings, one inning apiece for, you know, 10 or 12 guys. And then uh, – we have to learn a lot about our team. We got to figure out who to play where and um, the sooner the better. I don't think I've ever been a part of so many position players that played big roles the previous season being gone. And uh, this is going to be a big challenge to figure this out before opening day next year, because we're not starting out with some teams that we should be able to beat right away if we don't if we're not really, really ready to roll because the uh, schedule is really good. I guess one of those spots you got to fill is, is that catcher. Uh, I saw you got three guys on the roster listed as catchers. How do you feel about that spot? I feel real good after, you know, seeing the guys in here. You know, uh, I feel like, like Polk is, is ready to, to go. I feel like Roland's ready to go and – you know, Cal Kilgore, who we got in late, had some injuries, but he he caught in a regional last year. Um, so we got a good battle there. They all bring a little bit something to the table. You know, you got a right-handed hitter, you got a switch hitter, another right-handed hitter. Um, you know, Roland's got a lot of experience. Uh, Polk has a lot of experience at the Division One level with uh, playing in a, a really good league, playing all the way up to the national championship. And... Um, yeah, I feel good there, and I think that uh, it'll be it'll be some good competition, which is healthy, and it'll make those guys better. And last thing before I turn it back over to Oliver, um, your, your pitching staff last year that seemed like there was a lot of question marks as to who was going to start because you they hadn't pitched yet. This year, it seems like the opposite. You've got a lot of options. Does it feel different? Do you feel a lot better about that going into this year than you did last year? I do feel good about our pitching and our pitching depth and our experience. And I do like some of the new young guys. Obviously we have some guys with some really good arms that uh, you can kind of see the future a little bit if they stay healthy and, you know, throwing a bullpen is one thing uh, pitching when guys are on base and there's a little, when their stands are full, it's a little different, but as far as uh, talent and potential, I, I see a lot there, but you know, Hagen Smith and Tiger and McIntyre, Morris. I mean, those four guys jump out at you. Wiggins, I think he's going to be better than ever. I mean, I know I'm missing guys. Uh, we got, but it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good fall for our hitters to face this type of pitching every day, and uh, I, I think it's going to help us develop a little quicker with the bats. Andrew Ellis. Hey, Coach, obviously there's a little bit of a transition period anytime a player goes to a new level, and obviously you brought in a lot of JUCO guys. Do you think some of your guys are maybe better equipped to handle that transition, and who are some guys that jump out to you in that regard with your JUCO transfer? I mean, we got some good JUCO transfers, and I don't normally take a lot of transfers as far as the junior college level, but the guys we got, I mean, and it's a good mix. It's it's pitching and hitting. Um a little more on the offensive end, but these guys are first team all Americans, second team all Americans, uh, hit right handed, left handed. I mean, you know, Hunter Grimes from McLennan plays in the World Series. Uh, Caleb Cowley plays in the World Series, big right hand hitter out of Florida, started out at Florida State during the COVID year, uh, makes first team junior college all American. Um, 
and there's more. Uh, you know, I think when you think about Harold Cole, played at San Jack, he played in the Junior College World Series. Uh, so I feel like we're bringing in some guys that are physical. Uh, I don't feel like they're going to be intimidated uh, by the competition. Uh, you know, are they going to be able to hit Division One pitching? Uh, I think so because they faced a lot of guys that are going to Division One. And you know, example, we've got Hunter Holland here. He was the number one starter for San Jack, and you know, those are the type of guys that that get you to Grand Junction. And they a lot of those guys saw those types. So, um, I, I I do believe that. Uh, the, the transfer is going to make a big impact. And I think uh, getting, you know, Jared Wegner to, to campus. I mean, he was the first guy that we called that got in the portal. And I remember talking to him two or three times when we were in Omaha. Um, first team all conference player at Creighton. I thought somebody would sign him. Um, now that I have him to campus, Nobody hits the ball harder than him on our team at this time. And, uh, you know, he looks like it that he should lock down one of those outfield positions. So, but time will tell. Uh, but, you know, the transfer is going to be a, a big part of this team because we, we had a special team last year. We got a lot of guys back from the year before that had a good team that won a tournament, won a conference championship, didn't make it to Omaha. And then they came back and they made it to Omaha and, and, and finished in the top five. So, uh, that that's the way it goes. You know, it's great one year, but the next year you you, you kind of start over a little bit. And speaking of those outfield spots, Jace Borvin had another really good summer up in the Cape. Obviously, he's got to you know take it into the regular season SEC. But how good is it to see him continue to show he's that kind of hitter and he can be that kind of player for you? You know, Jace he he got hurt up there again, and uh, but when he did play, he hit. He didn't hit very many singles. Either a home run or a double. I think he had 19 hits and a couple of singles. I it seemed like every time I checked the box scores, I get them sent to me every night, about 10, 10 30 from the Cape. And it was, uh, you know, when he was in the lineup, a lot of doubles, a few home runs. And, you know, but there are a lot of days when he didn't play. He only played maybe half the time. So I think the, the key for him is to get healthy. I mean, he's still banged up now. He had some issues with his knees and, uh, yeah, so I guess to answer your question, if we can get a healthy Jace Borfin for one year, I think there would be a lot of pro interest in him, left-handed hitter with power. Uh, but he's got to stay healthy, and he's got a lot of competition. But, you know, we that's our plan is for him to be out there. Mason? Yeah, Coach, we saw Brady had – Brady Slavin's had surgery. I'm curious how he's doing, and, you know, what's your – plan for him is he going to dh maybe go back to first this season i'm not planning on dh him maybe here and there but we're planning on him playing first we had a great discussion with with brady and his father you know after the after he didn't get drafted and uh, the first conversation between those two was with coach thompson and and then uh you know they could have just had a conversation with me on the phone but we just felt like we all needed to meet in person and we did at my office and we hashed out a lot of things, talked about last year, talked about the year before, talked about playing the game and loving the game and playing with a smile on your face. And that's what we want out of Brady. And we think if we get that from Brady, we're, he's going to have a great year. I think Brady put a ton of pressure on himself last year. And we don't we don't want him to feel that pressure. We don't want him to play like that. We want him to play because he loves to play baseball. And I think from what I'm seeing so far, he's bouncing around. He's taking ground balls. He can't swing right now or throw, but that's coming. He's only a few weeks off on that. And, uh, but he's going to be, you'll see him play in first base in fall scrimmages. He's just not going to hit. And if he gets a ground ball hit to him and there should be a throw to second base, he's not going to throw it. You know, it's fall baseball, just catch the ball, feel it, get a feel for it and get back over there. You know, we were pretty good in 21 and he caught, he played first base almost every game. So uh, I imagine Brady's going to be better than ever. I plan on him hitting in the middle of our order in 23. And then Kendall Diggs was another guy. It seems like he did good in summer ball, got in the lineup for y'all a little bit last year. Kind of what's your expectation for him going into the fall? Uh, a lot of expectation. We'll see if he can handle it. You know, uh, he's he's got to find a place. You know, he likes to play third. He can play first. Um, 
we're trying to work him in the corner outfield a lot, a little this fall, and he hasn't had hardly any reps there, but we're going to stick him out there. I'm sure he's going to have his okay days and his bad days defensively, but we got to see what we have and uh, he'll get, he'll get work at, there in practice. But, you know, he, it's all about him swinging the bat and being a tough foul. When he, when he was good last year, he took his walks, fouled off a lot of pitches. Uh, he was just a, a really tough out. And that's the guy we need. We need him to make a jump. Most kids make a jump. The biggest jump is from the freshman to the sophomore year. So uh, we're hoping that that happens there with Kendall. And then last one, and I'll, I'll turn it over. There, you, you brought in Cody Frank. You know, the pitching staff returned a lot, but there's still some young guys who didn't see a whole lot of uh, innings last year. Are there any guys that really stand out to you that might take the next step this year that didn't really play a whole lot last year? Well, you know, I mean, I, I think about didn't play a lot or pitch a lot was, was Austin Ledbetter. I think that he can jump in there. Uh, he, uh, yeah, I mean, we – the pitches that we got back, most of them, you know, got some action. Uh, I mean, that's probably the one that, that jumps out the most. There's some guys that uh, that we redshirted last year that, you know, I don't really want to mention any names yet, but they they got to show out. There's, there's three or four of those guys this fall. This is a big fall for them because it's kind of to that point where when you're in your third semester and say you redshirted the year before or just pitched – an inning or two for one reason or another, they've got to make the team. They've got to, they've got to feel like that they're going to not waste the spring. And, and uh, you know, so there's a few of those guys, you know, we also got Cody Adcock in here from Crowder. Uh, you know, we, like you said, we got Cody Franks in from Nebraska, who's a kind of a do it all type guy he can start and close come get a big out got some attitude out there and adcock has really good stuff we his stuff may be better than we thought um i think he he's in his third year he started old miss we recruited him and he, he selected old miss over us went there for a year got to pitch and didn't feel like that was a great fit for him went to we tried to get him to he he was in the portal but he got in too late so he went to juco we would have taken him um and uh, we, we signed him last last fall, and he had a pretty good year. But I think the motivation is extra high now that he's here when he sees the competition. And, you know, that's, that's another older pitcher. So uh, we feel good about experienced guys. We feel good about some freshmen. The guys that were in the program last year, this is a super big year for them. Dudley, first of all, good to see you. Uh, Peyton Snowball, the uh, obviously played first base for you last year. Uh, you know, obviously some second base. What, 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 can, what do you see out of him this year in terms of what he might play and uh, his advance, his advancement? Yeah, well, he'll be our second baseman unless something crazy happens. But he does have a lot of competition if you just come out and watch our workouts. But you know, we've got some guys that are working out at second that I think can get in the lineup at other positions. And, you know, really talking about Peyton Holt, he's been out there a lot. He played third at Crowder. When I saw him play last fall, he played third base the day I was at the ball game uh, in a fall scrimmage up north. Uh, but he can also, you know, Peyton can also, Peyton Holt can also play uh, corner outfield for us. He, and he can swing the bat, uh, third base, second. But right now, you know, Stovall will be the man to beat out there. He's got a ton of experience, good hitter. I think he's probably a little tired, you know, freshman played almost every game last year. Then he went out to summer ball, travel, play, and and, and had some good days and had some okay days in an incredible league. I mean, you're seeing 93, 95 every day in the Cape, and it's hard to hit in that league, especially when you're coming off your freshman year. Um, we'll pace him a little bit this fall, but I do want him to be in there at second as much as possible, and then we'll do a lot of work there. But He's a really good second baseman. He kind of fool you, fools you with his quickness. You know, Robert was like a, the Energizer Bunny out there. That was his style. Uh, you know, uh, Stovall's more of a, you know, a little calmer, but he has some quickness. He can turn the double play, and we're teaching him a couple different techniques there. Uh, but that was his position in high school. He played some shortstop, but he was a middle guy. His pivot throws. Uh, to short are very accurate. Um, he's he just he just needs to continue to play there. Uh, but he's he'll be ready to go in the spring. 
Speaking of shortstop, you lost obviously a really good one. The uh, it looks like you have a lot of candidates to to take a yep. look at. We do have a lot of candidates, and you know, losing battles, and you know, a lot of people ask me really towards the end of the year, have you ever had a better shortstop? No, I haven't I've never had a better shortstop. And Jax Biggers was an incredible shortstop. They're a different style. He was he was that Energizer Bunny shortstop that would get it and throw it over there. Battles was really smooth. Uh, didn't but wasn't flashy he made every play at a very accurate strong arm uh you know so you know we've got harold colin from San jack that has really shown us in, in pre-game pre seeds practice workouts that he's gonna he has a lot of potential with the bat and if he goes the other way he can pull the ball and he can hit for power but he's got power at opposite field and you know if he he's he's a one of the guys that has an opportunity there john bolton who transferred in late from Austin P just really wanted to come here, had other options. He could have gone to, to Georgia and, and, and some, but he's been fielding the ball real well. Uh, I mean, he kind of jumps out at us and Hunter Grimes played center field last year for McLennan. He was injured. So they moved him to center and uh, you know, he played shortstop and he could play third. He's a really good player. Uh, and then, you know, we have uh, Jude Putz is back. Uh, trying to battle and get in the mix there. And, uh, you know, went out and played summer ball. It didn't go great, but he played and he got better. And he's a better player than he was last year. And, and I've just mentioned four guys, and I know we have one other. Uh, but but the way it works is I just want, I just want the, the most consistent guy to play there. Uh, you know, if he's not the most consistent, then he's really going to have to hit. So... Uh, we've got we've got four, five, six weeks to figure this thing out a little bit, and uh, then we'll we'll really work at work at that in the off season. Yeah, Dave, you mentioned uh, uh, Slavens and Borfin. Is there anybody else maybe dinged up or going to be limited this fall? Um, yeah, well, we have a, a transfer named Tyson Four Killer from Connors, and he played with a banged up foot most of the year last year and still had a really good year. They thought they had a little bit of an issue. They were going to go in and fix it. When they got in there, they realized it was broken. So that shows you how tough he is. Uh, you know, he's, he's just getting where he can hit. He hasn't been able to run or anything. So I think he's going to be out a little bit. Um, other than that, I'm kind of looking at a list here. Nobody's really jumping out at me as far as, you know, injuries with the position players, those are the guys and we'll slowly work them in and, and do what we can do, you know, with four killer, if we can just hit him, DH him here and there until he can move around better. Uh, but he wasn't planning on missing fall baseball. And uh, so it's going to throw him behind a little bit, especially when there's a lot of options and a lot of things being decided a little bit. Uh, so it's a, that's a tough one for him. And also another one of your transfers, uh, Tavian Josenberger from Kansas. I think one year he played center, one year he played second. Uh, where do you maybe envision him playing defensively for y'all? Outfield. He's going to have to fight to get in that outfield. I mean, here's a here's a guy that started two years at KU, and he's going to have to fight to play for us. Uh, center field. So he's another one that he's a switch hitter, but he had some back issues. He still hit like 280 last year. He hit over 300 as a freshman. He was healthy last year. His back was, was bothering him, and Looked like he had it healed up. It was bothering him a little bit. Um, he could run and do some things. Swinging the bat from the right side has been bothering him. So uh, hopefully he'll get cleared to, to swing at least from the left side. And we'll put him in center most all the time. And uh, that's that's a position that, uh, you know, there's three, two to three guys going to battle for that um, with Joe Sinberger and Mason Neville, a true freshman, and probably Hunter Grimes, uh, who played center and short, like I said, at McLennan. And, uh, but, yeah, Tavian's a guy that has experience. Uh, looking forward to getting him out there this fall. Hopefully, he'll be able to get out there most of the time. The last thing I got, I was wondering if anything maybe surprised you with how the, the draft and the signing deadline went. Did, it, did anybody you got didn't get anything surprise you? Yeah, probably on the younger side of it, you know, probably getting Jason Jones in here and, uh, you know, big right-handed hitter. He can field and throw. He can play third or first. And I think he would be really good at both of those positions, honestly. Uh, working on really getting him in shape. Uh, he can hit the ball a long way. And uh, 
And then, and then Mason Neville, who hits left-handed, six foot three, couple two hundred pounder. Uh, he missed hits balls off my window up here. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's an interesting, but they're still freshmen. It's going to take some time. You know, we got to try to find a way to get them in the lineup. We got to find a way to win with freshmen in the lineup. Get them ready for the end of the season. Get them ready for their sophomore and junior year. Um, those two sneaking through a little bit because they both had opportunity to sign for some really good money. Um, and they just kind of priced themselves out. They had all the phone calls. They just kept saying no. Um, you know, also Wegner. I, I don't know why somebody didn't draft him in 20 rounds. If they look at his history, last year was the first year that he hasn't been injured. He had a hamate bone issue the year before uh, and the year before because he, he either rebroke it or irritated it again. And this last year was his first year to play healthy at Creighton. And he had a, a tremendous year. And I think getting him through it was really big, especially at the, that position in the outfield. And he's a middle of the order type hitter. As far as pitching, I mean, you never know who, how it's going to go. We were concerned about Parker Coyle, left-handed freshman out of Oklahoma that maybe our fans don't know a lot about, but I think they're going to. Uh, skinny lefty, really can throw the breaking ball. Got a good arm, going to be in the 90s, low 90s now. Um, I mean, there's other guys, but, you know, those are guys that if you're looking at a professional profile, they're big and strong. And, you know, those are the guys that we were kind of holding our breath on a little bit. All right, good. Appreciate your time as always. Okay, guys, we'll see you out there.